morning. Um, Matt, good morning. Thanks for uh, letting me know. Yeah, I would go back and change it, but I feel it would take a little bit of time that I don't want to cut into the yoga practice. So yes, it is in fact Tuesday the 28th, not Monday the 28th. Uh, yeah, so, oh God, getting unstuck. How do we do this? <laughs> So I was, um, I had a little bit of time before um, starting the recording this morning and I was doing a little bit of journaling and really thinking about uh, my own practice and um, yesterday starting to hint at those concepts of um, moving, you know, that we are, uh, we are products of the past and uh, that there needs to, we have to have accountability for our uh, past actions and that we, um, you know, we can only move forward from this present moment, but how do we, you know, I was thinking like, how do we really reconcile with our pasts? And um, one part of that, uh, I, I believe is really um, being honest about <laughs> but being honest about where we're coming from and as I um, referenced last week um, reading this book about uh, social justice and how that might intersect with our yoga practice um, by Michelle uh, Michelle Cassandra Johnson uh, one thing she talked about was um, you know <laughs> she talked about working with a uh, white colleague uh, who trains with her and she said that she really appreciates this that this white colleague uh, identifies herself as a racist who is actively working to be a um, anti-racist and it made me think like oh that is like a really hard concept to accept for me that idea that like the idea that I am racist and um, it was really something that I felt moved to, to, to talk about because it was so uncomfortable, but I do consider that, I, I do consider that that is where I am right now because I have, um, I recognize that I have been complicit in an oppressive system, an oppressive culture, and that um, I do want to change, um, my relation, I, I do want to change this culture. I want to change my um, my part in it, and just uh, not to say that I am racist because that is something I wanted to be, or that's something that I have um, made <laughs> conscious choices to become. But uh, you know, recognizing that, recognizing where we at, we where we are in our culture, and taking an honest look at um, my part in that culture and how I've benefited from the oppression of others. It's kind of a um, conclusion that I'm, I'm realizing for myself. So, um, yeah, so having said that, it's like, okay, that's, and now I have that to move forward from. So um, somebody, we, I had a book discussion around this skill in action uh, book and um, somebody was saying that there are like 12 step programs for racism and I was thinking like, yeah, nobody starts a uh, nobody starts Alcoholics Anonymous because they sought out becoming an alcoholic. It's just um, some you know the idea of ex the idea of um, reconciling with things that were are, are out of your control and that you want to take um, that you want to take responsibility for and uh, accountability for moving forward. So that was just something I wanted to mention before uh, we started the practice today. Cause it's you know I'm just I'm trying to be honest with where I am, uh, where I am with my practice, and how I'm, you know, how I'm using what I am talking about on the mat and trying to bring that into um, change and um, growth in my own life. Okay, so um, maybe that's not where you are. <laughs> <laughs> but let's start. Okay, so uh, if you have not already, get your mat ready. And I'm going to switch this on. Oh, come on. Okay. Yeah, 
some reason I couldn't start the podcast recording last week, so if you're a podcast listener, I apologize for missing last week. Okay, so um, again, this idea today of moving forward, getting unstuck, and part of that being a uh, recognition, a deep examination of where we are and what has led us to this moment. Okay, so let's start in our comfortable cross-legged seated position. So create a environment of support, of safety. A place where you feel comfortable closing your eyes and turning your attention to this moment and to your body. Just like yesterday, I'd like to start with the breath today. So cultivate your slow and deep arrival breaths. Get into this time, this space, this physical embodiment. Using this breath as a entry into the body. And now that we are with the breath, start to notice physical sensation. Are there regions of the physical, um, of your physical being that are calling for attention? Areas of discomfort, soreness, pain. And by becoming aware of these things, is it possible to start to um, move forward from that moment, get, get unstuck from these physical burdens by bringing some attention to that space, possibly the, the idea of moving prana with the aid of your breath through those blocked areas will start to create more liberation. It might require a a deeper, um, a more extensive um, <laughs> a more extensive adjustment. So there might be a change in position, more padding, more support. You might even transition onto a chair. Feel those spaces where your body is meeting the earth beneath you. Send roots down from the physical body into the earth. Creating a sense of connection, support, a um, means of energy exchange between your body and the earth. And then as you root down, 
grow taller. You might aid in this, uh, in this lengthening of the spine by shrugging the shoulders up towards the ears, lengthening the sides of the body, lifting into the armpits, and then looping the shoulder blades together behind the heart space, creating a contraction of the upper back as the chest opens and lifts. An expression of strength and vulnerability. Let the weight of the arms release down towards the floor, bringing the shoulder blades down the back side of the chest. You might tilt the head down so the chin is parallel to the floor to generate more length along the back of the neck and up through the crown of the head. Slow, deep breath. And consider that after the attention to placing the body in this aligned seat with the idea of creating more space, has the breath already changed? Again, is there a sense of expansion or uh, liberation with the breathing? If you have not already, you might begin the practice of ujjayi pranayama by drawing in a gentle contraction at the back of the throat. And as you shrink the area, the valve through which you draw air in and out of the lungs, you might tune into the sound of your own breath. Let your consciousness ride the swell and ebb of the waves of breath. And consider for a moment uh, who else may be out there at this moment or past moments uh, doing this practice, following these words, taking these actions. This consideration of connectivity, the idea that we're all drawing on the same ocean, all filling our lungs with the same air that circulates all around us, it can be a hard thing, hard concept to um, in, to embrace. Consider that your wave uh, is cresting as another wave is ebbing. All part of a vast ocean of breath. Ocean of prana, vital energy.
continue breathing deeply. We will chant uh, the sound OM three times before beginning the moving practice. And uh, Matt, one of my regular students, uh, as, uh, was inquiring about um, whether it's necessary that we chant together or harmonizing, taking our own um, liberties and uh, personal expression with uh, the oming. And it, you know, we're in a unique situation where we're all in our own spaces and um, if someone decides to do something, uh, it's not going to disrupt or, um, or even offend anyone else. But um, it caused me to look a little bit deeper into, <laughs> into um, the origins of uh, the OM. And one thing, that, um, one thing that struck me was this idea that the OM, uh, when spelled A-U-M, um, really is more of a reflection of the uh, history or the origins of this practice where the, there's a three parts, three part sound, a three, syllab, three syllabic uh, sound to the OM, and that uh, there's an idea that it resonates uh, from the lower part of the body through the middle part of the body and then into the, the throat. So um, I'm gonna try to encapsulate that or embody that or attempt to experience that through the OMI today. So um, I would like to do further research on that, but let's, um, let's try it today, trying to extend out into a three syllable sound with each ohm. And you know, we're exploring this together. So and we're, you're in the, you have the liberty of being in your own space. So um, take, you know, do it how you want to do it. Um, okay, so exhale and inhale for the th first of three ohms. Bow your head to your heart um, <laughs> and then slowly lift your head as you open your eyes. Okay, that was interesting. I felt more of a rising vibration. Um, okay, so the next uh, thing we're going to do is come forward into a tabletop shape. So let's plant the wrists below the shoulders, spread the fingers, knees are hip width distance, and we're going to start right into our cat and cow stretches. Inhale, tailbone and gaze up into the cow stretch. And then exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, tailbone towards the floor, belly button towards the ceiling. Push the floor away into cat. And my cat appeared right outside the door as I started doing this shape. Inhale, back to cow. And continue the exploration of the spine, of the marriage or um, or synchronization of movement and breath through these two shapes. As we move here, um, I had another student reach out who, uh, you know, had experienced kind of a, uh, a, a period where uh, she wasn't able to practice, um, she wasn't able to practice regularly, and I'm sure many of us can relate to that experience of um, 
you know, with yoga or with other things where uh, you have worked into a level of proficiency or comfort with a practice and then have, for whatever reason, uh, been away from that practice for a period of time. And then the challenge of coming back and recognizing um, that your body has changed uh, or your... Um, your skill level has changed in perhaps unexpected or even uh, undesirable ways. And that can be uh, really a hard thing to come back to. We can uh, really get um, discouraged or stuck um, when, we have, when we have to, uh, again, this idea of reconciling with the past, recognizing uh, ch where change has occurred in ways that we, we didn't intend it to. And then how do we reconcile with where we are as a means of moving forward? Okay, let's come back into a neutral table shape. And we're going to angle the right shin out to the right and then stack the left hip and left shoulder on top of the right side for this modified side plank position. Uh, wrap the outside of the left foot toward, to the floor to start. And you might experience this extension or sense of expansion across the top or the outer left hip. Take the left arm to the sky, broaden across the chest. Shift weight out of the right wrist as you ground into the knuckles of the right hand. And then sweep the left heel to the height of the hip. So notice how that changes sensation in the pelvis. Ground through the right knee, push through the left foot. And now start to uh, experiment with pointing the left toes and bending the left knee. So maybe you attempt to grab the foot behind the hip. Maybe you draw the knee in towards the chest to grab the outside of the foot or ankle. So then with that grip of the foot, can you start to extend the left knee towards the back wall once again? If you have, uh, if you have come to that position, is it possible to kick your foot into your hand? activating the left leg as you begin to push the left thigh towards the wall that your back is facing. So be on the journey. In the, the, in the, be present with the physical sensations that come up as we attempt these different shapes. And then there's got to be acknowledgement uh, acceptance of where we are in the moment in order to choose the path forward. So is the path just to stay with this uh, physical sensation that you're experiencing now? Or is the path to uh, turn up the pose, uh, start to intensify the shape by kicking the thigh bone back, maybe turning the gaze up, and notice the expression on the face. So is there tension, inadvertent expression that might be a clue into your experience at this moment? And with that information, is it possible to start to ungrip, get unstuck? And then gaze down, hand down, knee down. Let's angle the left shin out and do that on the second side. So start with the, uh, the modified uh, side plank, wrapping the outside of the right foot to the floor as you stack the right hip and right shoulder on top of the left side. Grounding through the knuckles of the left hand, trying to lift up out of the left wrist. Lengthen back through the tailbone and then scoop it forward to keep the low spine lengthening. And then right arm up, right heel up to the height of the hip. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, from here, are we either going to bend the knee and try to grab the foot from behind? Or if that's not accessible, attempt to bring the knee in towards the chest to grab the foot or ankle. 
and then start to expand the knee back. So if there's a sharp objection along the front of the hip, ease into this. Only go as far back as um, your body is uh, going to feel uh, supportive or supported or uh, <laughs> you know not pain. <laughs> uh, if you're not feeling pain, then push the thigh bone back, right shoulder blade onto the back of the chest, curl the gaze up. Again, option to um, recognize your feelings in this moment around this pose as they may be expressed inadvertently in the face. Option two, turn the frown upside down. Yeah, I said it. And then gaze down, hand down, knee down. And we will uh, move the knees slightly apart and then thread the left hand between the knees reaching back for the right calf, ankle, or even the heel, coming to this twisted version of child's pose. Knees down, hips to the left, looking up under the right armpit. Infuse the pose with breath. And then how does the breath, um, how does the breath shape and uh, how does the breath shape the pose? So you have this entry into the pose informed by all your past experience of this shape, informed by everything uh, that is present in the body. And then we have this experience of breath in the pose. So this breath uh, anchoring us or drawing us back into the present moment. Okay, unwind. Left hand down, right arm threads between the knees, reaching back for left ankle, calf, or heel, outside of the right shoulder, right side of the head on the mat. Press the left hand down, left shoulder towards the right, knees down, hips to the right. Reconnect with breath and the shape. I often bring up this analogy in this shape of wringing the sponge. Inhale, the, the idea of filling the sponge. Exhale, wringing it out, drawing the belly button in towards the spine, promoting circulation of, of blood and um, energy through the inner organs. back to center. Keep the knees apart from the toes to touch. Sit the hips heavily back towards the heels. Press the hands down and forward and round the low spine. Tuck the tailbone strongly towards the heels. Keep the hips grounded back and down. And then look forward and start to walk the upper body forward. Spread the fingers, spread the palms. Reach the chin and chest forward and then slowly lower the head down. So if you find your head, your face, uncomfortably squished towards to the floor, then you might turn your right cheek to the mat to start, and I'll uh, direct, you, direct you to move your head in the other direction after a few breaths in this shape. So opportunity here to uh, become aware of the breath in the back body. <laughs> Another image I like to conjure is uh, in this pose is 
this is a very old reference, but if you remember the original ja Jurassic Park uh, and the character of Laura Dern's character, she uh, lies on this big, um, what is it, a, a stegosaurus, <laughs> and uh, she, her whole body is moved by the breath of the stegosaurus. So I love that imagery of the body expanding so physically, so, um, so dramatically with the breath. So making the breath visible in the back body. Turn the left cheek to the floor, release the head, soften the neck. And push forward once again into a tabletop position and walk the knees back maybe six to eight inches. Tuck the toes under and tilt the tailbone towards the ceiling as though doing cow pose in the low back. Look forward, reach forward with the chin and chest and then exhale low, uh, bend the elbows back, lower the chin and chest to the floor in tandem. So knees, chest, chin or uh, I think eight pointed pose. And then slide forward onto the belly. Lengthen the legs back one at a time and arms can be by the sides. So relax the right leg and engage the left leg. So uh, point back, reach back through the left toes and then uh, push the left foot down as you engage the uh, left quadricep muscles and uh, Janu Banda or knee lock on the left side. So strong and long, left leg, and then we're gonna begin to lift the left leg off of the floor, the foot and then the thigh, lift up, front of the left hip point remains grounded. Extend and lift using the back side of the leg, the glutes, the low back, to, to lift the leg higher. So keep extending, keep lifting, keep breathing. <laughs> and then release the left leg down. Relax the heel out to the left, toes turn in, and then point the right toes back. Tone the right leg. Tone the right leg, point back through the toes, draw in and up, Janu Banda. And then begin to lift the right leg. Extend and lift, extend and lift. Front of the right hip grounds. Extend and lift the right leg. Higher, higher, highest. And then release the right leg down. Heel winds out, maybe shift the hips a little bit from side to side. Point the toes back, squeeze the legs in. Draw in and up, Janu Banda, lengthen back through the tailbone, and then slowly lift both legs together. Squeeze them in, extend back, keep the front of the hip points grounded. Use the strength of the back body to lift the legs. Back of the thighs, glutes, low back for five, keep breathing, four, three, two, one, release those legs down. Heels out, toes in, maybe a little rocking side to side of the legs and hips. <sighs> okay, point the toes back. First, setting them hip width distance apart. We're gonna take the arms straight out to either side of the room. I don't, I did this yesterday. I really don't often practice uh, the, uh, this belly down back bend without lifting the legs, but let's try it today. So with the arms straight out, engage the legs, press the feet down, lengthen the tailbone back. We're going to keep the lower body grounded and inhale to peel the chin and chest and arms up away from the floor. So open the palms, spread the fingers, extend out through the fingertips, draw back through the sides of the neck, lift through the crown of the head. Engage with breath, engage the back body, keep the legs grounded. Really. Uh, 
and really connect to that sense of extension back through the tailbone and scooping the tailbone forward so the front of the pelvis stays grounded. And then you're drawing forward from the space of the hips. Again, breathe. Again, notice the expression on the face. What's that? <laughs> What's that your face is saying? <laughs> you love this? Turn up the outer edges of your mouth for five, four, three, two, one, and oh, lower back to the floor, right cheek to the floor. <laughs> Sorry, podcast. Um, <laughs> just knocked over my recording device. Uh, right cheek to the floor, head to the arm bones forward, arms at your sides, big toes touch, heels wide apart. Head heavy, neck soft, upper back broad. Arrive. So I love these belly down back bends for the experience of effort and release. Quick transitions, mind and body from a, um, from a, a stressor, from something that is um, <laughs> putting a lot of, um, putting a heavy burden on the muscles to lift the body off of the floor to this position of support, release, reflection. So notice the, uh, the vibrations, the uh, resonant energy of the effort that you have put forth, not only for that, uh, that previous pose, but throughout the practice. More air in with your next inhale. Empty the lungs more completely with your next exhale. changes. Chin back to the floor, arms out to either side of the room, point your toes back, squeeze your legs, and then inhale, begin to peel your arms and legs, chin and chest, up away from the floor. Again, this strong exertion of, um, of effort, this contraction, this strengthening of the back body to lift and open the chest so that you might soar. Liberate from the earth, take off, fly for five, keep breathing, four, three, two, one, lower down, back to the floor, left cheek to the earth, head to the arm bones forward, arms heavy at your sides, big toes touch, heels widen apart, release the weight of the skull, return to the breath, opportunity for arrival, reflection, release. Okay guys, that felt so good and I'm sure we're all on the same page here, haha. -ha. Uh, that we're going to do one more. <laughs> Chin on the floor, bend the knees, flex the feet. Reach back for the outsides of the ankles. And then try to draw your, low, your knees back to hip width distance as they'll likely have splayed apart. Shoulder blades on the back. And then again, pressure of ankles into hands. Um, activate the legs by kicking into the hands and then lifting the thighs away from the floor. So this is bow pose. Kick and lift with the legs. Is there a sense of releasing the shoulders back that you can connect with, rather than always um, using strength to move deeper into the pose? Is it possible to let the mechanics of the pose move you deeper? So the, um, the strength of the legs moving the shoulders back, opening up the chest, 
lifting the heart space. Again, check in with the face. What's your face telling you about your experience? Turn the frown upside down, five, four, three, two, and one, lower down again, right cheek to the floor, head to the arm bones forward, big toes touch, heels wide apart, head heavy, neck soft, upper back broad, return to the moment, return to the breath, again, the sea of breath connecting all of us as my wave ebbs, your wave crests. Okay, balance would necessitate one more. Chin to the floor. This time, point the toes. Okay, so I didn't mention this on the first time, but there's a, there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a chance that you only grabbed one ankle on that first side. I uh, only have access to one ankle. So if that's the case, grab that other ankle on this round. Otherwise, I'm gonna switch it up by grabbing the outside of the outside of the feet and pointing the toes for this next one. This will kind of mean the difference between being on your belly and being uh, closer to the front of your pelvis. So this one's more on the belly as the legs may have the ability to lift higher. Okay, ankles and knees hip width distance. Kick and lift. Kick and lift, kick and lift. Let the arms be pulled back with the pressure of the, hand, the feet into the hands. Maybe start to look up. What? Can you see your toes coming up over the crown of your head? No, I can't. I never. <laughs> I can't, but what if you could? Keep breathing. What is your face telling you? What do you want to tell your face? And let it go. <laughs> Left cheek to the floor. Head to the arm bones forward. Big toes touch. Heels widen apart. Transition. Ride the waves of the breath. And you feel the beat of your own heart. Is there a comfort or a sense of safety? Uh, with this idea of the earth holding you in this moment. So again, back to this concept uh, of getting unstuck. So I think this uh, belly down back bend practice to me has been a very powerful practice for getting unstuck. This practice of transitioning mind and body from one state, a very heightened, uh, even stressful state of activity to this complete uh, release, this complete, um, completely supported shape on the earth. Okay, chin to the floor, and it changes. Tuck the toes, lift the kneecaps up, lengthen back through the heels, engage the legs, wrists by the ribs, and exhale, push up to the plank position. That can also be done on the knees. What's, uh, what I'd like to um, encourage is an alignment between the shoulders, hips, and heels. So if the hips are swaying down with the weight of the lower body, then knees can come down to get more length in the lower back and um, keep that alignment between hips, uh, heels, and shoulders. Okay, 
So yeah, either from plank or from um, knees on the floor, extend the hips up and back and transition into our first downward facing dog of today's practice. So uh, <laughs> as I said last week, so imagine your, uh, imagine your dog is happy to see you. Imagine your body is like grateful to get into this shape and it wants to show its appreciation by uh, wagging its tail, doing a little movement from side to side. So if you imagine you are excited to be in this shape and start to explore it with affection and wonder. <laughs> okay. So once you've given your dog some wags, even your dog some pats, push the hips up and back, keeping any amount of bend in the knees. Push the hands down and forward, rooting through the knuckle of the index finger and the thumb especially. Lengthen the spine, release the head down, and then we'll transition into our first set of five push-ups, all of which can be done on the knees for that more uh, stable, supportive alignment for the low back. Inhale, come forward to plank, exhale, lower down. Inhale, draw up through the sides of the waistline and push the hips up and back. So consider the, the push-up as being a core exercise as well as a workout for the upper body. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale hips move back too. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back four. Last one, first set. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, Exhale, hips lead you back, downward facing dog. Walk your right foot towards center an inch or two as you lift your left leg straight up and back. Look up and back at your left toes as you press your hands down and forward, reach through the left heel and keeping the toes pointing straight down towards the floor, lift the leg higher, reach the leg longer. Extend and lift the left leg. And then look to the top of the mat and lunge your left foot forward. Okay, this is where you might um, find your blocks, locate your two blocks if you have them, and place them at the top of your mat. As I referenced yesterday, so I have, uh, I have been using uh, lunges in my practice for a very long time, and I have been uh, using a lot of the same cueing in my lunges for that duration of time. The cueing has always been to get the knee over the ankle. So I have recently had the experience of that um, not necessarily creating um, a length in the front of the right hip, but maybe a, um, a discomfort and like stretching a rubber band too far so that it, um, <laughs> it's, it's losing some of its elasticity. So um, that is where I'm coming from now in my lunges. So this idea of um, <laughs> recognizing past action as, um, as, as it um, culminates or as it um, attributes to the present moment and then deciding to adapt, uh, deciding to um, act differently, take <laughs> skill in action. So where, um, how do you start to modify from your experience? Letting go of some of the ideal, ideas or ideals that you may have been attached to. So uh, as I say this, I'm not lunging as deeply as I have before. And even in not lunging as deeply, keeping, uh, keeping less, keeping away from the 90 degree angle in the left leg, I'm noticing there's a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of shaking in my legs. So there's uh, efforts to doing things a new way. So just explore where you are with your lunge today. How do you always do it? How might you explore a new way? What might be, um, what might be there to discover in uh, changing your approach? Okay, from here we are going to move forward into a half moon pose. 
So look back at the right foot and then step the right foot forward, uh, maybe a foot or even more than a foot. And then hands can walk with the blocks forward, and shifting weight to the left leg as we lift the right leg straight up and back. So we're trying to keep the hips at an even height, wrapping the right outer hip downward so the knee and toes of the right leg point straight down to the floor. So again, uh, I've used this analogy before of placing the glass of water on the low back. So we're in a supported warrior three pose. The upper body parallels the floor, the back leg parallels the floor. Pushing down through the right foot and then from that connection, rising up, engaging the right leg, the left leg, Johnny Bonda on the left leg. And now we're going to transition from this warrior three stance into a half moon. So left hand can be on the block, right hand can come to the right hip, and then start to lift the right hip on top of the left hip. Okay, pay attention to the left toes, make sure they're still pointing forward, and then only lift the right, right hip as high as you can without having to move the left toes. Lengthen back through the tailbone, lift through the right inner thigh, open up into Arda, how did I forget the name of this pose? <laughs> um, half moon pose. I know you're just out there shouting at me the name of this pose. <laughs> I'll, I'll get there on the second side. So come to half moon, push through the right foot, extend through the crown of the head, broaden across the chest. And if you'd like to attempt a similar bind that we did on the floor, you might do so by bringing the, the, chest, the thigh in towards the chest to grab the outside of the foot or ankle. And then again, gauge how much extension you can do of the right knee back. And then maybe push the foot into the hand, uh, moving the right thigh towards the wall that your back is facing, right shoulder blade onto the back of the chest, keeping that rooted connection, rooting from the left leg, rising from the left leg. Finding a point to focus the gaze, moving into that unknown space, that challenging uh, uh, space where the gaze might go up towards the ceiling. And because we are going to continue standing on the left leg, we're going to move out of the Arda Chapasana um, and into the Warrior Three variation once again. So hips square, place your glass of water, on the low back, lift through the right inner upper thigh, push back through the right heel, connection between the left leg and the earth, pushing down, grow, rising up, uh, then gaze forward into warrior three. Arms can be back, arms can be out, arms can be forward for the most challenge. Shoulder blades on the back, gaze forward, back thigh, torso parallel to the floor, and we're going to hold past our comfort here. So moving into the discomfort. Moving through awkward, getting to fierce. Um, finding that acceptance of where we are to move forward into a new future. For five, four, three, two, and one, hands back to the blocks, Woo! hands frame the front foot with the blocks, back to your lunge, and let's send the hips back around the spine into a modified pyramid pose, and flow there between the lunge and the pyramid pose a couple of times just to uh, <laughs> give that front leg some, some attention, some relief. And then back to the lunge, right palm can be on the floor or the block, sweep the left arm up, opening the chest towards the left wall, looking up. And then hands back to the blocks, place the blocks out to the side, press back, DFD, downward facing dog. Your dog's happy to see you. And 
Let's do our second set of five. Five push-ups before we get to that other side. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale lower, possibly coming to the knees for alignment. Lift through the sides of the waistline. Push down through the knuckles. Hips shift up and back. Downward facing dog one. Inhale forward. Exhale lower. Inhale press. Exhale back two. Inhale forward. Exhale lower. Inhale press. Exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back four, last one, second set, inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale hips lead back, left foot inches towards center as right leg lifts straight up and back. Hands push down and forward, root through the knuckles, look at the right toes, push back through the heel, lift through the back inner thigh, reach and lift, engage and lift, engage and lift, right leg up, look to the top of the mat and lunge. So again, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm uh, at least for today, I'm moving away from this messaging of the deep, uh, the deep 90 degree lunge in the right knee. So I'm moving away from that just from my own experience of teaching something the same way over a long period of time, practicing in kind of a, um, <laughs> a, uh, a narrow range of movement and then uh, experiencing that maybe there's uh, maybe at least for me there's a, uh, a modification that could be made to support um, my movement my growth going forward so consider your own lunge today what are you noticing where are you noticing how can you start to make subtle changes into the shape or back from the depth of the lunge to create um, new, new avenues of growth. So I, I like to remember that um, the practice is born, you know, many, many uh, hundreds of years ago from people moving their bodies into these shapes and being observant about the effects of these poses, talking about them, discussing them uh, with, one, with other people, making the same movements. And from here, step the left foot forward. Hands uh, move with or without the blocks in front of you as you shift weight to the right leg, lift the left leg, knee and toes down. Hips at an even height, push back through the left heel, extend forward through the crown of the head. Grounding down through the right leg, lifting up. Again, that tree analogy, rooting to rise. Get that strength, that feeling of stability from the earth to create a stable right leg. Okay, again, transition to Ardha Chandrasana. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> half moon pose. So, um, Right hand can be on the block. The distance between the ankle and the wrist, mimicking the distance between your wrist, your hip, and your armpit. So keeping the right side body long as the left hand comes to the left hip. The left hip revolves over the right hip, keeping the right toes forward. So there may be a, um, a place where your toes, your right toes want to turn out to the right. When you reach that point, keep your hip at that point. That might mean the hip is turned or the toes are turned slightly towards the floor. Again, recognize, be honest with where you are, accepting of where we are in order to move forward. And um, yeah, the, the idea of being accepting of where we are does not necessarily mean being um, complacent to it. <laughs> We're just using, the, using where we are to move forward. Left arm up, gaze might go up. Stay here, question mark. Or bring the left knee into the chest, grabbing the outer foot or ankle, reaching the knee back. Gauging where is your bus stop today? Where is a good place to explore? Be in the space that you need to be to move forward from. 
Okay, kick the foot into the hand. Left shoulder blade on the back. This thigh moves towards the wall that the back is facing. Extending back through the knee. Rooting through the right leg. Rising from the light right leg. Gaze might go left. Gaze might go up. down, hands back to blocks, glass of water at the low back, okay, launching into our thread, warrior three, or Vira Madrasana three, arms out, arms forward, arms back, shoulders on the back, gaze forward, become your, your airplane, your flying warrior, it's funny because these poses where we're referencing flying are kind of the poses where you feel most bound to the earth. Think about that symbolism. <laughs> Extend forward, reach back, fly, fly the edges of your mouth towards the ceiling for five, four, three, two, one, hands down, oh, lunge back, and Come back to your dog. Your dog has missed you. See it wag. Return to your breath. Here it comes. Here it comes. Final set of three push-ups. Inhale to plank. Exhale to lower. Inhale, press. Exhale back, either child's pose on the knees or down dog. Inhale forward, connect to the core, lower down. Press back up. Hips move back, synchronize breath and movement. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back three, two more. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back four, the last one. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Okay, look back at your feet and start a long, slow journey towards the top of your mat. Baby steps. Hips shift side to side, recognizing the back of each leg as the heel steps down, the outer hip as the hip sways out to one side. Eventually arriving in a forward fold at the top of the mat, feet hip width distance apart. Lift and spread the toes, place them back down, create a wide base with the feet. Bend the knees, rest the torso on the thighs, and let the upper body hang forward. Take hold of wrists, forearms, or biceps. Breathe. Let the upper body wave forward, sway side to side. Arrive here. Okay, fingertips to the floor or to blocks in front of you. Push the feet down, lift the hips up. Fold fully forward, and as you inhale next, fingertips to the shins, half lift, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale, fold in. Let's do that two more times. Very light touch on the shins, using the strength of the upper back to come parallel to the floor with the upper body. Exhale, fold. One more time, inhale to lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rise. Arms overhead, stand up. Palms touch and hands through heart center. Roll the shoulder back, shoulders back, arms, palms forward. Arrive in your mountain. Become the mountain. So what is this pose? I feel like it's such a powerful pose. So there's this... Um, reorientation that may be happening at this moment uh, because we were in a forward folded shape and now we are upright. So the head 
is oriented in a new way to the body. Consider both the strength and vulnerability of this expression. Can you feel the strength of your legs beneath you, holding you up? And as you inhale next, float the arms overhead. Exhale, flow forward, fingertips to the floor, release the head. Inhale, lift halfway, fingertips to the shins. Exhale, and fold in deeply. Inhale to rise. And exhale, hands through heart center, arms to the sides. Okay, we're going to launch straight into our C salutations. So move along with me. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. If you haven't done this before, you might watch. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale to lift halfway. Exhale to sink the hips down. Maybe bring the fingertips behind the heels as the hips go into the chair. Inhale, arms forward, waistline back, half chair. Exhale, sink the hips down, sweep the legs overhead. Inhale, roll back forward, balance into half chair. Exhale, hips high, head low, fold in. Inhale, rise with the breath, arms up, gaze up, exhale, hands through heart center, shoulders back, palms forward. Inhale to rise, root to rise, exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway, fingertips to shins, exhale, sink the hips into the chair. Inhale, arms forward, waistline back, exhale, hips down, swing the legs. Inhale, roll forward, half chair. Exhale, fold forward, hips high, head low. Inhale, rise. One more wave. Exhale, hands through heart center, shoulders back. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, fingertips to the shins. Exhale, sink the hips. Inhale, arms forward. Exhale, hips down, swing the legs. Inhale, rock forward, half chair. Exhale, head low, hips high. Inhale, rise to stand, look up, reach up. Exhale, hands through heart center, arms to the sides, gaze forward or eyes closed. Return to the mountain. Back to the breath, arrive in the present, reflecting on how the posture, how the postures, how the movements, how the practice so far resonates in the body. And consider that this practice has been built upon every other practice, has been built upon every other action in our lives leading up to this moment. Don't miss this moment, an opportunity to reconcile with the past and move forward into the future. Flutter open your eyes, and we are going to break from what we have done yesterday, if you were um, in the class, and we're going to do a little crow pose today. So if you um, are a seasoned, uh, 
If you are a seasoned crow, <laughs> then you might, um, you might not use the block, but if this is a practice um, that you're still uh, trying to get unstuck from the floor, uh, the, per the perch, uh, the block, it can be a very helpful tool. So we're gonna stand, we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, use my fingers for support as I stand up on the block. So in our feet together, the block is placed on its lowest setting, so the broad uh, face of it, I'm, I'm standing on the broad face of the block. And with my inner feet together, I'm gonna start to bend my knees out to the outsides of my arms, and I'm melting my tailbone down towards my heels. So my hands are placed in front of me on the floor, shoulder width distance apart, just as they would be for a plank pose, uh, tabletop, or down dog. So uh, see, the see the hands on the floor. So we've been talking a lot about rooting down through the hips, through the legs, now rooting down through the hands. So create that energetic connection, the pushing down of the hands into the floor, and that um, recoiling of energy back from the earth into the body. Okay, so with the hips low, start to lean the weight of the upper body forward, and if possible, squeeze the legs into the outer arms. So the higher the legs are up on the backs of the legs, that's probably indicating uh, more uh, flexibility in the hips, and uh, with access to more flexibility in the hips, this pose does get a little uh, less heavy. Uh, so the gaze goes forward, and then the body starts to move forward. So I'm going to bend my elbows, hands on the floor, arms to the out, the legs to the outside of the arms, shift my body weight forward, and then start to rise up off the floor, rise up off the perch with my toes. Keeping the inner feet together, squeeze the legs into the arms, push the arms down, and uh, if there's, uh, if there's <laughs> worry of, of falling forward and you're practicing on a hard floor, uh, then place a blanket there so you have a soft landing. I'm realizing that we've done a lot of strength in the upper body and this is kind of exhausting. But um, So <laughs> think about next time when you haven't done 15 push-ups and you try this, it might, uh, it might really liberate your crow. But so if you work if you work from this point where, um, if you work from this point of being tired, uh, you you might be uh, working for for something in the future that um, you will have deeper access to. So uh, forward, forward, forward. Try it again. Lift the legs. Push the hands down. Rounding the spine. Gaze forward. And come on out of there. Whew. That was hard for me. <laughs> Not to put my stuff on your stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, we are actually pretty much out of time. Uh, I'm gonna keep going here so we get a nice savasana. So let's, uh, let's come to lie on our backs, arms splayed out. <sighs> Supported by the earth open to the sky, knees bent, feet as wide as the mat, exhale, knees fall to the left, inhale, knees through center, exhale, knees fall to the right, inhale, center, one more round like that, exhale, knees left, inhale, center, and exhale, knees right. Inhale, center, and now knees fall to the left for an extended period. So, if this causes pain or compression in the low back with the legs uh, leaning and released to the left, then experiment with either shifting the hips to the right and then releasing the legs, or even shifting the hips more to the left. So, uh, I've heard both, I've heard uh, both cueing, so I think it's a matter of just, um, finding the, uh, the, the modification, the exact uh, position of the hips that's going to create the sense of most space for the individual practitioner. So uh, either choose to stay here with the legs as they are or hook the left ankle to the outside of the right knee or thigh using the weight of the left leg to pull the right inner thigh downward. 
creating a deeper sense of opening across the front of the right hip. Today I'm going to mix it up. Okay, like take the left arm across the body towards the right, and then hook the right arm up under the left arm. So we're doing a shoulder stretch here as we do this uh, hip release, abdominal, um, abdominal release, low back twist. Breathe into all parts of this moment. What does your breath have to tell you? What does your face have to tell you? What is your body telling you in this shape? Release the arms, release the legs, knees back to center, re square the hips. Exhale, knees move to the right and situate the hips in a way where you feel uh, there's sufficient space in the low back, no sense of um, compression or pinching. If you'd like right ankle to the outside of the left thigh or knee, drawing the left knee deep down, soften the abdomen, relinquish effort here in the low body. Right arm sweeps across the front of the chest, reaching to the left, and then left arm comes up underneath the right arm. So this is a this is a familiar stretch. I remember doing this, um, you know, like in PE class in uh, grade school. So if you're on the on the podcast and thinking this is some magical foreign stretch, it, it probably it likely is not, it's just something we don't uh, encounter in a yoga practice often. So we did a lot of shoulders back, so I thought we'd do, uh, do some things uh, stretching the upper back with the arms in front. center, lift the feet up, cup the knees, push the knees into the hands and rock the hips side to side, activating or lengthening the low back as you push the knees into the hands and feeling the pressure of the earth, the mat up into the body, the body down into the mat. And now knees come in and up slowly gauging um, that this is a um, change of movement for the low back and transition into full happy baby grabbing outer edges of the feet rocking side to side massaging the back body pushing the feet into the hands feet together, interlace the fingers around the outer edges of the feet, lengthen the low spine against the floor, push the feet into the hands, extend through the inner thighs, contract through the outer hips, lengthening the lower back on the floor, using the pressure of the hand, the feet into the hands to pull the arms straight, pull the arms taut, again curling the heads of the arm bones away from the floor, while keeping the head grounded here. Release, and now lastly, lovingly, honestly, embrace yourself. Express uh, inner gratitude for the effort that you made to get to your mat today. 
to face the moment, to build skill for moving forward. Chin to chest, forehead towards the two knees, squeeze the legs, tuck the tailbone, draw in, draw in, draw in, draw in. And then slowly unwind, extend out, release the legs. And as I've been doing recently, uh, encouraging uh, everyone to take some time around this savasana to set ourselves up for a uh, experience of support. So consider what might feel supportive today in terms of uh, the position you find yourself in, whether that be lying straight on the back, flat on the back, whether that mean a pillow underneath the head or rolled up underneath the knees, whether it be a reclined goddess, or as I'm going to move into the legs up the wall in uh, lieu of an inversion practice today. So as I've said, this can be a really difficult time to uh, stay with the body because, you know, we all have this, <laughs> I mean, not we all, I, speaking for myself, um, once the once the active part of the, pu the, the practice is over, um, that's when my mind takes over and starts activating uh, the, next, the next thing that's gonna happen, the next thing off of my mat. So let's take some energy, some effort to, uh, to, to bring um, intention into this time. So uh, whether it be legs up the wall, goddess, or, um, traditional savasana, or even a version of child's pose. Invite yourself, invite your awareness into the body. And that's where we might start just as we started the practice. Just as we started the practice today, we might arrive here with breath. And one interesting thing about the breath is that immediately upon noticing the breath, uh, the impulse is to change it. So firstly, might we notice the breath and consciously loosen grip on the breath, loosen uh, expectation or, um, <laughs> or uh, gripping on the breath. to loosen that grip to some degree. You might have the opportunity to observe the breath mimicking the body. So as the body slows, reaches a state of relative stillness, The, the breath may begin to follow suit. Perhaps eventually the breath becomes less and less perceptible. We exchange or transition from inhale to exhale. I also like to use this, utilize this water imagery 
during Savasana. So as the breath reaches relative stillness, as the body reaches relative stillness, the breath begins to follow suit. And rather than the ocean now, my picture a more enclosed body of water in the form of a, a pool, a lake, a pond. movement lessons the surface of this surface area calms down of the water reaches a state of relative stillness, glass-like, reflective of the sun's light. While also offering a clear view down to the depths, down through the waters.
to reconnect with breath. Larger swell with your next inhale. And as you exhale, send a ripple of movement out into your extremities, manifesting in a movement of fingers, movement of toes. Bend the knees. Slide the feet down the wall if they're up the wall. Removing a strap around the ankles if you have it. Take the left arm along the left ear and roll onto your left side. Transition from the practice, from this closing corpse pose into a fetal position. An opportunity to move forward, the change for rebirth. Eventually push your way up once again to a seated position, whatever form that may take. Again, connect to the support of the earth. Root to rise. Bring the hands either together in front of the heart or onto the heart space. Again, we will chant Om just one single time to close the practice. And again, this idea of um, extending the AUM into a three syllabic um, word or um, sound. Exhale the breath and inhale for Om. presence either with the the live class or the the stream or the pre-recorded class I appreciate knowing that you are out there um, the light in me recognizes and bows to the light that lives within each of you namaste Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for staying. Um, I hope it is not um, too inconvenient for <laughs> those of you here that uh, I, I am um, pretty consistently going over the uh, prescribed time, but um, there's no class coming in after this, so uh, <laughs> that's my excuse. <laughs> I'm going to stop this uh, podcast recording. And as I always say, um, I appreciate hearing from you. Um, those of you who have reached out on a regular basis, I know that um, uh, somebody, Jeffrey uh, and Scotty, had, um, to, uh, had alerted me to the fact that they were here yesterday, and I didn't see the um, I didn't see the chat feature until after class, so um, didn't have an opportunity to acknowledge them. But I do appreciate. Um, in, you know, I do appreciate checking in on the chat, even if I don't respond to it directly. Sometimes I don't see it till I'm closing down the stream. Um, so yeah, please uh, reach out with your, um, your thoughts, your feedback. Um, it is really helpful to me to um, have a better understanding of your experience um, during the practice and your experiences 
during this, um, this challenging time, this new paradigm of our lives. Um, so yeah, please, uh, please reach out with me, to me with your thoughts and with your experiences. And I, I, um, I've noticed that um, by having more of that, uh, it really has helped me to, um, to feel a sense of um, better serving uh, the, the community that is watching. So um, yeah, please do that. I will be here tomorrow with a condensed sequence. The, the Wednesday night is definitely shorter. So uh, 5.30 um, Eastern time, I will uh, get more of an approximation of 60 minutes to, for this class. So um, join me then or next week. Uh, check out previous classes. Uh, check out other offerings from my home studio, Rubber Soul. Um, uh, there's some links on the, the home page of the Rubber Soul website. Um, yeah, so again, thank you, and I'm going to be signing off here. Here's my, here's my one last opportunity to get awkward with you guys.